Hi everybody! Welcome to Frame Loss, episode 57. Once again, one of our hosts is sick, and we don't have a full crew tonight. Nope. So tonight's kind of a laid-back show again. This time, hopefully though, the show isn't a lost episode, and we actually, it saves it, and it's not deleted forever like last week's episode, which was my fault. Um, but I am your host, Two Inches, with me who isn't sick, is the Dr. Monkey. Say I'm hello. still... So, I'm still a little sick, but I can at least do a but show. you're well enough to show up. And that's, yep, I'm gonna cough a lot, but that's fine. deal with it. That's fine. Tonight is just anything goes. I don't even care. Yeah. But, the big question everybody has is, since the last, since the last two shows, for you, yeah. what have you been playing? Wow, I've missed so much. I must have played a lot of games. You <laughs> Joke's have. on you, I haven't. Um, I've been playing League of Legends, of course. That's been pretty standard still. Um, I've also... I've been playing some Punch-Out on the Wii. I played that a little bit. Nice. I really need to get back into playing that more. I love that game. Someday I will stream it or do a Let's Play or something. I love that game. Um, and then uh, I also have been playing some NES Golf Open or Golf Tour, whatever it's called. Oh, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The NES Golf where it has Mario and Luigi. Yeah. And, like, Peach is there, I guess. Yep. But, yeah, I, that's one of, like, the games, being a Nintendo ambassador that I got on my 3DS back when uh, the first if people didn't know what that yeah. is. When the 3DS first came out, if you got it before they dropped the price, you got 10 NES games and, like, 10, or it's 5 NES games and 5 GBA Game Boy games. Advance games, something yeah. like that, and you got them automatically, and I think a few of them never went on the virtual console. I, don't, I think a couple of them haven't. Yeah, um, um, and you can only get them if you're Ambassador. And my favorite games that I got on that is the NES Golf Open, whenever I'm bored. Dude, I was I pumped that for, open. I was pumped for Super Metroid. Yeah, that didn't make it on there, though. Yeah, it did. That was part of the Ambassador pack. I, that regular Metroid was. No, Super Metroid was definitely part of it. Let me, where's my 3DS? I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that. Because I got the Ambassador Pack because I bought it. I was a dumb. Oh man. yeah, no, I. It's not. No, I, I think the Ambassador Pack might have been different. I whoa, know whoa, I didn't get whoa, Super Metroid. Hands on the camera. I'm trying to find my 3DS. Super Metroid's for the Super Nintendo though. It was Metroid Fusion. Oh, it was. Met yeah, you're right. It was Metroid Fusion. And I never got through much much of it because my 3DS's uh, right bumper is kind of broken sometimes. Yep. Uh, so I can't get past some spots. Uh, Biohazard. Um, I can't grab my episode off Twitch because the audio section, uh, one of the audio clips was flagged. So a big half hour chunk of the episode is silent, which doesn't help me. So I like I like the effort, uh, but I can't grab it off of Twitch. So it's anyway, gone forever. What have you been playing, Two Inches? Uh, actually, I started playing a lot of Heroes of the Storm since it was released last night. I actually played till like 1 a.m. I put in a lot of time on that. Um, other than that, pretty much The Witcher. Uh, oh, yeah. The Witcher, just a lot of Witcher because a, there's a lot of game there. Yeah. Is it living up to uh, all the hype? I have some issues with it, but... They're very minor, and they haven't you, stopped me from playing the game. Do you think the uh, delays were worth it, then? Yeah, I definitely do. I, I think they could have gone a little bit longer to maybe... Cause <coughs> there are still issues with the game, and well, they yeah. could have waited a little bit longer to iron those out, but I still think it's a super solid product, uh, and I'm really happy to play it. Um, it's it's just really good. Oh, Biohazard says uh, the mute doesn't affect the recording. Oh, okay. Well, I'll be interested to see that. Um, let's do releases of the week real quick because they're pretty, pretty not weak, but they're weak. <laughs> um, Elder Scrolls Online: Tamriel Unlimited is finally coming to the console next week on Xbox One and PS4. Hey. Um, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But just in time for E3, so Bethesda can talk about it at their E3 conference. Yeah. Uh, I take it. You, did you play the PC one? No, but I knew a bunch of people were in the closed beta, and I've heard too much about it. Yeah, the closed beta was abysmal, yeah. and it didn't really get better after that. That's what I've heard. Um, next up, we have Operation Abyss, New Tokyo Legacy for the PS Vita. 
never uh, heard of that. It's a JRPG. Uh, it looks interesting. Oh, of course. It's, if I've never heard of it and it's for a Sony system, I have to assume that. Yep. Uh, and then an interesting one, uh, a piece of hardware, the PlayStation 4 hard drive data bank uh, by Nyko. So what this is, is it's a you take your cover off your PS4, and this replaces the cover. Now, it stands taller than the PS4, uh, like so it's not flush anymore on the top. Like, it stands up. But it looks really nice. Like, it looks like it was meant to be there. Um, Nyko did a good job making it look like it's actually part of the PS4. And what it actually does for you is it allows you to plug in a 3.5-inch hard drive. Uh, so, like, a standard desktop hard drive instead of a laptop one. So then you can buy, like, a 2-terabyte desktop hard drive for under 100 bucks, And now you're talking about a system with a lot of storage space in it. Cool. Um, so it's a cool little addition. I'm, I've never been big on third-party so like hardware that you like attach to your system. I've yeah. never had good luck with it. But I like the concept of it, uh, so it's, I might try it out. I'm not actually 100% sure on that, but I might try it out. Interesting. Um, and then Friday of that same week, uh, LEGO Jurassic World will be released on every console that is currently out on the market. Uh, PS4, PS3, PS Vita, Xbox One, 360, 3DS, and the Wii U. Uh, are you are you getting that game? Uh, not right away. I since I just uh, actually bought Splatoon. Like oh, when yeah, it came, you did buy it came out, I my new game thing is low. I, yep. Like I don't have enough funds. Also because. Uh, I'll bring it up now. I've been on an amiibo buying spree lately. Um, out of nowhere, I just I had to. That when Amazon, for those who didn't know, they came out on Friday, and Amazon had a thing where they were like, "Hey, we know they come out, so at these exact certain times, sometime between them, we will be rolling out the official like where you can buy them, and you can just jump on and buy them." And so I was just like, "I will never have a chance like this again," yeah. and so I jumped on. And anyone I could. And I was pissed because uh, the rarest one on there was Robin, who is apparently a unicorn now, uh, which in the ranking means almost impossible to find for less than $50 plus. Um, and the Robin one, literally, I never even saw the link to buy come up. Yeah, and yet a bunch, really of other, a bunch of other people online were like, oh, I saw I got mine. I was like, I've been refreshing this page for like 15 minutes and I never saw it yeah. and every other one I, I was able to get including the Splatoon 3 pack which I'm pumped about because that's going to be rare Target didn't even get them in to sell them yeah Amiibos are serious business they are I take it seriously yeah uh, do I have the news of the week overlay with this new setup I might I don't know do 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 news of the week uh, why don't you take us into the news yep oh, there it is boom <laughs> <coughs> all right uh our first big topic that we have a lot of information for is fallout 4 has been announced yeah that it's real today. it's official Beth bethesda announced it if you're hearing it first from us then you really have no other news source because that's all that's been talked about today that was the biggest thing they had a countdown go up yesterday and everyone was like oh it's countdown to fallout 4 a few of us naysayers was like nah it's gonna be a countdown to Fallout New Vegas HD remake, just to spite people. Fallout Tactics 2. Yeah, people kept being like, it's going to be something like that. Nope, it's official Fallout 4. Uh, it's got no release date yet, and going to have more info at E3. Uh, the one cool thing about the trailer, which we don't have to show because it's don't, really long. I have I have the website with like screenshots and stuff. that I. Oh, cool. Uh, all, the entire trailer was in-engine, which is cool. Um. The art did, is very. I did appreciate the art is very Bethesda. -y. I'm glad CJ is absent for us talking about how we had to. They had showed a trailer that was all like yeah. an engine, so he can't talk about like how ah, this trailer was so good. I'm glad he's not here for that. <laughs> well, um, it still doesn't show gameplay. That's what no, he it want. doesn't show gameplay. Um, you would shows, want gameplay, but it it's Fallout, so to... you know what the gameplay is gonna be. Some of the stuff toward the end of the trailer, and we're not showing the trailer right now because it's like almost four minutes long. So if you want to go out. see the trailer, just type in Fallout 4. You'll get 40 links to the trailer. And at least two of them will be real. Yeah. Not fake. Um, 
what interested me about it was uh, the fact that they did it at all. Not that they made Fallout 4, but that they announced it a week before E3. It's the new cool thing, dude. They've held on to this for so long, and then a week before E3, they dropped the hammer. Yeah, now, I'm going into the Bethesda press conference with, like, I know everything they're going to talk about. Like, I, there's going to be, like, I'm looking at it as, like, you have nothing to surprise me with. Yeah. You've shown your hand. The reason I watch these press conferences is to be surprised and be like, what don't I know about? And then they were yeah. just like, boom, here it is. It feels like that's the big thing nowadays, is to reveal your hand before E3, which makes it seem like, People are losing care about E three, and they need E three. You would think because I agree with you. I like the whole. Oh man, I'm so surprised. I'm like, I was really interested, and they surprised me. But nowadays, it feels like the press just and just people don't care nowadays. That they're like, why? Yeah, you're gonna surprise me. Oh, it's gonna be another Assassin's Creed. Did it. So people are trying to show the interesting stuff beforehand yeah. to be like, you should come to our press conference. We'll have more info. Please pay attention because people are starting to be like, eh. And we'll we'll definitely. That's what it feels like. It it definitely feels like that, and we have more news later that talks about that even more. Yeah. Um, and we'll go into that next week during our pre E three show, but yeah, it just seems like everyone's like. I, like who cares just tell them now and then yeah. they'll watch the e3 press conference or whatever yeah it's it's seeming because this isn't the first company that's done it there's others that show just little teasers and being like more e3 almost to be like yeah we're announcing it now so you have a reason to watch e3 yeah because it's become people are like oh it's e3 let's watch the panel oh first person shooter first person shooter first person shooter Something stupid with the connect, first person shooter. Yeah. Like stuff like that. I was so actually, they're trying to like pull I was actually people. looking forward to it because uh not the game, but the yeah. the press conference. Because I wanted to see like are they actually gonna do it? Like people have been waiting. Yeah. We've never had an E three press conference, so everyone assumes one hundred percent without Oh yeah, this is their out, first official press conference. Yeah. Everyone assumed that they were gonna show Fallout Four there. And they still are, but yeah. I wanted them to, like, walk off stage and be like, hi, like, we got one more thing to show you, like, wave off, and then boom, that whole crowd would have jumped out of their seat. Now yeah. everyone's just going to be sitting there like, oh, well, we, they already told us. They're like, surprise, this all terms a real fallout shelter. Yeah. We've started an, a nuclear apocalypse. It's called, we're creating a fallout MMO called Real Life. Yeah, so the game takes place in Boston. Um, yep. There's For scenes here, of, yeah. like, a statue of Paul Revere. Uh, <coughs> of the Mayflower, the Boston nice. Capitol building, and then some people even said that they saw like what looked like the streets leading to Fenway Park, with like a guy in like a baseball like esque uniform holding a bat like when Dale's in it. Nice. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Um, I'm not a fan of Fallout Three and New Vegas. I think I'm one of the outliers here. I love Fallout One and Two. But I do not like 3 in New Vegas. I don't like I Bethesda's offerings. I really like Fallout 1. I enjoyed 3 in New Vegas. For me, when it comes to the Fallout series, I feel like I'm, like, neutral, leaning towards being a fan. Like, I... Whenever I play a Fallout game, I get really engrossed in it, and I love it, and I'm just really into it, because I love side missions of any games. I'm a side mission person more than a main story person. I'm a... Oh, I love having options of different factions and, like, what factions can I be friends? Because I like that in the little, like, the world building they do. And I love Fallout's world building. But I'm not like, yeah, Fallout 4. I'm just like, oh, cool. Uh, eventually I'll play it. When I play it, I'll really love it. But I'm not, like, I'm not someone who's been, like, I'm waiting for this. This game's going to change my life. I know I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. But, like, more neutral on it. It's like, oh, cool, Fallout. I'll play it. I, like, it, it's not a game for me. I'm not going to buy it when it comes out. Um, I'll eventually play it just because I have to play everything if I'm going to... Especially with Bethesda games. If I'm going to tear them apart because I can't stand Bethesda, then I have yeah. to play it to at least back up my claims. But yeah. I just... I miss the old Fallout, and I'm glad Wasteland 2 came out so, like, I could still have, like, that kind of game. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just think what Bethesda did with it was really a shame, and... I know I'm, like, one of the few who doesn't like those two games specifically. 
But I thought 3 was just a mess, and I didn't like New Vegas at all either. I was excited, though, that this one, they actually chose to go with more than one color scheme. Uh, <laughs> from what the trailer showed, they definitely used more than one color palette. So my big thing is, I think Fallout 3 is, the whole game is just different shades of green, and then New Vegas is just different shades of orange. Bru and brown. And brown. Which is, I which guess, is, a, I shade. Guess a shade of orange. Like a rusty, <coughs> a rusty brown. The thing I think is uh, cool, now that I thought of it, uh, first Fallout took place in like the D.C. area, so you had D.C., but you also had like Pittsburgh. Like the pit was Pittsburgh. Yep. Um, so I'm curious, it'll take place mainly in Boston, but the Fallout worlds have always been like really large, so I wonder if any of it will take place in ruined Rhode Island, which I would be a fan of, because Rhode Island's not that far from Boston at all. Um, Providence? So, so what I would hope from it is... I would hope that it would stay in... See, what I want is I want it to stay in Boston, and they take away, like, the size of the map, but add, like... I want to be able to go into all those buildings. Okay. I feel like tech is at a point where if there's a building on a map, I should be able to go into it. I, I, I agree, but I know they're not going to do that because the whole point of, like... The feel of Fallout games is we want a large, barren area so you can feel the wasteland type thing. Yeah, I mean, I get, but I mean, Boston as like, a city is still large. That's true, but. I just want to go into buildings. I don't like when games are just like arbitrarily like, this door's locked. It's like, I'm kicking down other shit. Like, I can kick the yeah. door down. I, I understand that. I just am hoping for it just because it would be cool to have, like, ruined Rhode Island. Yeah, no, I can see that. I want to go to the ruins of Providence. No one will be living there, because okay. no one wants to. Um, so, Street Fighter. They made some mistakes last week. We didn't really talk about it, because I was hoping they would get their act together and fix it. And I could kind of <coughs> shuffle it under the radar, without people, like, yelling at me for not talking about Street Fighter being broken. But Street Fighter came out last week on the PS4, and it was a mess. To the point Ultra where... Street. Yeah, Ultra Street Fighter 4. 4. To the point where people, would, like, Guile would throw a Sonic Boom, but the animation for the Sonic Boom wasn't a sonic boom it was just a like still shot of guile throwing a sonic boom uh it was it's super broken like just garbage level broken to the point that evo had to come out and make an announcement saying that they will not be using that version of the game oh, for dang. evo uh but today uh ultra street fighter 4 sony has put a patch in to try and get it back to health uh yeah. the update is rolling out in north america specifically today and some of the little patch notes are they're reducing interface lag within menus. That's right, the menus lagged. That's how wow. bad this was. Uh, address disappearing projectiles. That goes with the Guile animation I told you about. Um, DiCaprio's teleport animation. Missing sound effects for Red Focus. Uh, Akuma Stop uh, was not playing. Um, just a ton of different fixes. Uh, so I think that's really good. Hopefully they can make up for how abysmal that launch was which really looks bad because street fighter 5 is coming exclusively to sony street fighter 4 also exclusively to sony on the next gen platforms yeah uh and capcom didn't work on this title sony actually outsourced it to a different studio oh um and so it doesn't really look good on sony's end like i know i'm kind of a sony fanboy on this show but this definitely does not look good for them and they need to take care of this quickly and hopefully this takes care of a large part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If Capcom didn't even work on it, that's rough. Yeah, another another company, I think it was like Ocean something, worked on the like... Ocean's Eleven. Worked on the uh, conversion. All right, moving on. New LEGO game has been announced, and uh, I'm not even going to talk about it. Let's just roll the trailer. We don't really and... need to talk about it. The trailer is yeah. going to say pretty much everything we could say. All the best stuff. Lego Worlds.
So that's Lego Worlds. Uh, how do you how do you make a game to compete with uh, Minecraft? <coughs> who in every review has been called Legos, like in video games, you make the same game with Legos, with Lego, literal Legos. Uh, in video game. In a video game. I I think it looks great. Um right I do now too. right now it's available for early access and the price is actually shocking to me since it's Lego. I expected it to be like through the roof cuz Lego Legos aren't cheap. Yeah. Uh but 14.99 um I'm probably oh, wow. going to pick that up this weekend. It's pretty uh, cheap check for Lego. it out. Yeah, probably, I think I Was think it Minecraft's price $15 when uh, it first started? I got mine for 10. One of the times it was fifteen. Yeah, as I got it, mine as it went up. for ten. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, this looks rad. Um, I think some of the animations look a little crude. Yeah, but, like I'm not gonna get too picky on it. They definitely like some of it does look very Lego-y, I guess. Uh, early Lego games didn't have the best animations. Yeah. Um, but I still think it looks pretty. Yeah, I pretty think it rad. Cool. It did take Lego long enough. I agree with Biohazard. It's been getting really good reviews so far uh, for people playing it, and it is an early access, so it's not a final product. Um, but yeah, check that out because that's how you take down Minecraft. Just make yeah. it with Lego. Well, at least compete. Take down. I don't know. I don't think they can take down at this point. Yeah, uh, Minecraft is gonna stay alive. Another interesting thing they said is they said there's gonna be no microtransactions Ooh. for Lego, so like new content and stuff will all be free. Which, That's cool. which Minecraft does on the PC, but on the consoles, you're going to be paying for those skins. And I think it's a damn shame that you have to pay for skins on the console version of Minecraft. Well, that's your fault for playing the console version of Minecraft. Uh, I agree, Seek but they could, life. they could put it in so it supports, like, JPEGs. Cause I mean, yeah, they, they could have. You can that. make a JPEG file and put that into Minecraft, and that's your character model. Yeah, that's true. That's all I'm saying. And you should always play with skins in Minecraft. It's yeah. Perfect. Uh, let's talk about FIFA, and not the FIFA that's been in the news all week with, yep. every, with all the scandals and the corruption and the hatred. Let's talk and about the whole FBI FIFA. investigating them. Yeah, the secret agents that like dropped in from the roof and like captured <laughs> these dudes. Uh, let's talk about good stuff FIFA's doing. Uh, yeah. Electronic Arts has announced that for the first time in FIFA, the game will feature female players. Uh, the sports game will feature 12 international teams... Uh, in the latest installment of FIFA, fix, FIFA 16, which yeah. launches on September 22nd. So we also have a date on it, which is nice. Oh, nice. Uh, just as their male counterparts, female players will look move, will look and move as they do on the pitch representing their country. Yeah. Uh, GM David Rudder said, It's come to a bunch of different ways. Uh, we've been chatting about it in-game for a couple of years now, and as you may or may not know, there's been petitions to have women put into the game. And I'm lucky enough to be the father of two amazing little girls, and both of them play FIFA a lot, and they're constantly pestering me about why they can't play as a woman. Uh, we've all, always felt that there were things that needed to be done in the game uh, that were more pressing, making passing work or shooting, etc. But the fact of the matter is the tools and the technology that we have in the game now are at a level where you can really do the authenticity of a woman's game justice. Now, to me that says... It, the tech has nothing to do with this. Yeah. They, I don't. I don't understand how the tech of a female player is going to be different than the tech of a male player. Yeah. It, in fact, I think he really worded that poorly. He shouldn't have said. We. <laughs> he really shouldn't have said. Oh, we wanted to do it, but other stuff was far more important. So we. Yeah. Got, yeah. Yeah. I like how like, he said. Like wording that is just like. Oh, that's... There are always cool. things that were more important, like passing. Like, what you guys are doing is really good, and the way you word it, it's like, you're going to get so much crap for that. You could have worded it better. It's like, oh, we wanted to, but stuff's more important, like passing. It's like, hasn't passing... I mean, passing been... and yeah, shooting are, passing are important. Better. I mean, yeah, mechanics are important, but it's not like passing hasn't been in their games. Yeah, and let's face it. These games have been solid since, like the first like there's never been a bad fifa game yeah. this is their baby they have enough they could have put women in this game long before it oh I'm yeah i'm glad they're in it now because yeah. um i actually watch a lot of female soccer because female soccer is way more violent than male soccer oh those dude. girls hit each other so hard and they and, don't fall down and like complain like oh i hurt my knee they get up and punch each other in the face oh yeah dude the p and have you seen all like the the stupid like online complaints about this where guy a lot of guys are like 
the most common one I've heard is people being like, oh, first they take Mad Max from us, and now they're taking soccer. It's like, <laughs> are you kidding? Like, women's soccer has been women's bigger than is... men's for l- longer than I can remember. Me, all through the 90s, I know little about sports, but growing up in the 90s, I knew Mia Hamm. I, I wouldn't say it's bigger than male soccer. I would say it's more violent and more fun to watch most of the time. Like, World Cup, yes, I'll watch that over women's soccer. But women's soccer over just, like, a normal, like, Manchester United game, I'm watching world uh, women's soccer. Yeah. Those I just knew, each other. like, growing up, no, besides, like, David Beckham, I knew no male soccer player names, but I knew a bunch of female soccer yeah. players because they were all more focused on. And anyway, like, guys, people complaining, like, oh, putting makes, women, why no who would want to play as a female character? It's like, a lot of people, why shouldn't yeah. both options be there if... Both guys and girls both play the sport. It makes no sense. Um, yeah, it makes no the, sense why people would be upset about this. What he ends it with is, if you're less keen on the women's game, however, don't panic. As you might expect, you can still choose from the usual selection of male, national, and international teams. So you don't even have to, like, you can just pretend they're not even in the game. You don't yeah. have to play as them. It, because you can't pit women against men in the soc- in FIFA. So, like, you can just, like, not play them. Yeah. And that makes sense, too, just because, like, people are like, oh, you can't play men against women, why not? Well, because in the actual sport, that's not how it works. Yeah. So, like, if you complain about that, just fix the actual sport first, and the game will follow. But, yeah, um, I'm yeah the I people think complain think and think addition. this, the people complain and thinks it ruins the game, that makes no sense. Like, yeah. you can just not, you're right, you can just not do it. It doesn't really ruin or change anything. Correct. Like, the women will play exactly like the men do. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good addition. It's a nice step for them. And that screenshot looks awesome. I'm going to post yeah, it right up again. Yeah, it's especially better. They, I think they handled it better than, I feel like, a few years ago. Like, if they did this five years ago, they would just release, like, FIFA 16, women's FIFA 16 or something like that. Like, I feel like if this was yeah, handled... Yeah, I'm, oh, oh. I'm glad they didn't make a separate game for it. Yeah, I feel like, like, yeah, just five eight years ago, we would get something like women's soccer instead of it just being part yeah. of the actual game. Yeah, I'm really glad it's it's an actual, like, in yeah. game. I think it's cool. Okay, moving on to more new games. Um, we have, uh, in a Japan-only Nintendo Direct, Bandai Namco Games offered a sneak peek at its upcoming Wii U game dubbed Project Treasure. Aside from the fact that it was announced that it will be free-to-play... We still know very little about this uh, downloadable Nintendo exclusive. And uh, for an early look on what you can expect, here's the teaser that they put out that has all the info. Very little info, but it's fun. Yeah, all the very little info. So that's Project Treasure. Uh, what do you think? Like, was that the first time you've seen it? Yes. Okay. I knew I nothing about this game. First. I, <laughs> as someone who has played a lot of uh, four-person online co-op games, I actually am kind of really excited to have a four-person, hopefully online co-op game to play on my Wii U, uh, especially if I get to play as a dude in a purple shirt and vest that's right up my alley. Yeah. Um... I think it looks cool. Inter- it looks interesting. Yeah, um, it looks... Again, they don't show a lot. Uh, they I think do show gameplay, though. They do show gameplay. Um, I think the graphics look kind of dated, but... I yeah, the graphics definitely look dated, but it being free-to-play, I'm fine with that. Like, it, re- the game kind of reminds me of a, like, at least graphically, like an off-rails House of the Dead. Yeah. Uh, no, you're definitely right. 
the the graphics are definitely dated. Um, but but it's free to gameplay play, so. premise what we've seen the fact that it's free to play a free to play four person co op game on the Wii U. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. All the characters looked interesting and they all look like they played differently, which is what you which is what I like from a four person co op like the whole alert one of the alerts of um evolve you have four person but each like class is plays differently you had like it looked like a heavy dude with a bazooka you had a girl with a katana yeah you would axe shotgun man who just looked suave in his purple shirt and vest yeah i mean who doesn't like axe shotgun man i'm all for him so yeah i i definitely want to see more info but it's free to play so i'm, I'm gonna get it yeah yeah i mean it's definitely a download because it's free <coughs> yeah um, i hope it's like I hope when they say free to play, it actually means like free to play as in download for nothing and not just like, hey, we won't make you purchase microtransactions or something. Yeah. Uh, moving on to what we talked about earlier in the show uh, with games being announced pre E3, uh, Gears of War has been announced that it will be shown at E3. So Microsoft's Black Tusk Studio is no more. Uh, they changed name. They, they're, they're, they're still there. They just changed names for yeah. some reason. Uh, we'll get to that. The Gears of War developer is now called The Coalition. Uh, studio head Rod Ferguson announced today in a video explaining the reason behind the name change. Ferguson said that The Coalition is both a reference to who we are as a team and what we're working on. By that he means Gears of War. Refer referencing the Coalition of Order of Governments, uh, or COG, if you will, for the Gears of War fans in the audience. Uh, that's part of the series fiction. When people hear 343 Industries, they associate it with Halo. When they hear Turn 10 Studios, they know that's who makes Forza, Ferguson said. Uh, moving forward, when you hear The Coalition, we want you to think Gears of War. So, rest in peace, Blast Tuck Studios, and long live The Coalition, Ferguson ended with. Uh, you cannot say Black Tusk Studios. I can't. It was, that was really hard. <laughs> you, you messed it up every time. Yeah. Uh... We can expect to see what the Coalition is working on in E3 2015, which means Gears of War, since they've already said that. Yeah, that's uh, all they'll be doing forever. So this is another game that they could have held <coughs> for literally a week. Yeah. And announced. It'd be like, surprise, Gears of War, you Gears of War fans happy, and everyone would be like, choo-choo, coal train, and everything like that. This is yet another game that, like, people were going into that E3 press conference, like, they've been quiet for a while, like... I know that team has been working on something. Maybe it's Gears of War. Maybe it's not. Who knows? And then they announce it. Everyone goes crazy. Now it's just like, oh, yeah, we told you about Gears of War. Here it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll get to see it. Like, this is different than Fallout because we got to see Fallout. Yeah. We it's... have... All we know is there will be new Gears of War. Same with Doom, right? It was Doom that was like, hey, look, new Doom. Well, Doom showed something. Yeah, but it wasn't it was it like five seconds? It was like 11. <laughs> and I think five of those seconds were... The company logo. Oh, okay. So, and all together, it was five seconds. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just another game announcing before E3. Uh, it's, dude, it's the new trend. It's the, in case you weren't going to watch E3, yeah. we're giving you a reason to watch E3. And if you thought that was the <coughs> last piece of E3 news that we have for you tonight, you'd be wrong. But that's for yep. later. Yep. See, we're doing just what they're doing. We're teasing <laughs> you with something that will just be coming to very soon. Yep. So, Mighty Number no. 9. From the PlayStation blog, Mighty Number no. 9 will support cross by across PS4, PS3, and PS Vita. What's cooler than that? Well, how about the fact that cross by will be available on both the digital versions and the PS4 retail version? I the means is that you that get it for both consoles, and that's awesome. What were you saying? I said I love games that are cross by. <laughs> but uh, last announcement of the day is an extremely limited collector's edition only for North America. The Mighty Number no. 9 Signature Edition will include the launch edition of the PS4 game, as well as an individually numbered 6.5 inch figure of Beck, complete with 14 points of articulation and three interchangeable faceplates. Packaging on this version will prominently feature a metallic foil signature from legendary creator Keiji Inafune across the front. Oh, and all. All of that for only fifty nine ninety nine, coming out September fifteenth. So I have an image of the figure uh, up on the stream, 
And the figure looks really good. Like, that yeah. looks like a nice final figure. Okay, it is this game. The whole time while I'm saying Mighty Number no. 9, I was like, that's the one created by the Mega Man yeah. creator, right? Yeah. That we've been hearing about for, like, four years. I'm definitely excited about this game. I'm definitely oh, buying too. this game. Um, but that okay. fifty nine ninety nine for that figure, which is not that large. It's 6.5 inches. I mean, that's, yeah. I guess that's kind of large. Uh, um, but... That's thirty dollars for the figure is what you're paying yeah. because the game is twenty nine ninety nine without it. But three, three interchangeable faceplates, and <laughs> metallic foil signature from the creator of Mega Man. Yeah, I mean it looks cool. I'll probably change my mind and end up buying the collector's edition anyway. Dude, if you went to a convention, they would probably charge you fifty dollars for his signature alone. See, we actually had this talk earlier today about uh, people who we would pay to get their autograph and i actually couldn't come up with anybody oh yeah no i would never um like i've bought stuff like one person i've like so like udon who does the street fighter art i yeah. bought stuff at his booth which then he signs but i paid for the physical object yeah and then he signs it i didn't just like bring a thing to him and be like hey here's 20 bucks write your name on it please yeah i would prefer to buy something there and get their signature i mean i got that with um all the original voices of uh, Red vs. Blue. I got season one with all their signatures. Um, the only person I'd probably pay for an autograph for is uh, Ichiro Oda, the artist and creator of One Piece. But chances are it would be like what you were talking about, where he would just sign something I yeah. had. <laughs> Maybe so, yeah. you have to pay to have the thing you have signed. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm excited for Mighty Number no. 9. Um... I'm definitely holding out for the PS4 copy. Uh, oh, and I'm on the another fence. reason I need to get a PS4. I'm on the fence if I want the collector's edition or not. But it, thirty dollars extra for that figure just seems like a lot. Yeah. But, but let's yeah, move on. It's definitely growing a whole list of games that give me a reason to buy a PS4. Yeah. So I really need to buy a PS4. It definitely is. Uh, Steam summer sale dates were leaked again. I feel like they're always leaked and they're always by the same. Place. Yeah, I think it's on purpose. Uh, so the Steam Summer Sale supposedly will start June 11th and last until the 20th, uh, are according to a prematurely revealed social post. Uh, last year, the Steam Summer Adventure let people collect, trade, and craft cards. Uh, that was the game one, right? I don't remember if that was the one where you had teams. Um like, there was the red team, the blue team, green team, purple team, pink team. P pink team. I think that was last year. I thought that was Summer Sale. Um, <laughs> I think, no, it was Summer Sale. Yeah, I know that summer. for a fact. So that was last year. I okay. did not like that system. and I thought it was intriguing, but I didn't really pay attention enough to really care. Um, so the article says that there's no word if that's coming back. And I don't think it is because they haven't repeated their, like, setup, like, at all, I don't think. No, they've never repeated. They've yeah. made it different every time. Now, I think, and this could be just me making speculation, I think they're going to bring back the turning cards into gems because you can still do that after the yeah. winter sale. So hopefully that mechanic is still in there because I have a ton of gems just sitting in my inventory that I'm like, no one's buying these. Like, There's no <laughs> reason to have them. Uh, so hopefully that comes back so I can do something with those. Yeah. But uh, I think Never it's participated. I would like it if the Steam Summer Sale wasn't the weekend of E3. Yeah. Um, but well, there's going to be E3-related deals. You know there will be. How does that work? Not not of games that are announced, but like With they'll companies? announce they'll, they'll announce like oh like, Fallout 4, and you're going to see New Vegas go on sale. Now. Like yeah, like during the Bethesda press conference, there's like a Bethesda block of sales. Yeah. Like during that's going to happen. Uh, EA like EA sale that would be cool. I would be okay with that. I I definitely see that happening. I, also because most of those games will go on summer sale anyway because they go on sale yeah. every sale. I take my statement back. I <coughs> I like that yeah. it will be during that. Aha. Uh -huh. Um. Um. Yeah. I've never participated in, in any of like. The special things going with sales. I have cards. I have stuff like that. But I've always just kept them. We have to because... talk after the show, though, because <laughs> I might need some of those cards. Because I just I buy and I get gifted games, and I just buy mostly indie games that look cool. And I already had such trouble keeping up with the TF2 economy system that was. I am very large in the Steam card buying and selling market. So yeah, 
I had to learn the whole, like, TF2 economy, and then I fell off on that. Like, I was like, oh, I want to get this thing. I have these things to trade, and my friends were like, well, here's 50 spreadsheets to learn the economy. And I was like, okay. So I didn't want to do that with Steam either. I'm going to have to get some of those cards from you. Yeah, I probably don't actually have that much. You can't have any of my Guacamelee or TF2 cards, though. That's fine. I've already maxed out TF2, so I don't need any. <coughs> okay. Uh, moving on to other things that are happening in summer. Um, <laughs> so, you guys like MOBAs? I like MOBAs. Do you like uh, comics? I like comics. So do you want to play a comic book MOBA? Well, you can't, because Infinite Crisis is uh, officially shutting down on August 14th. After officially launching and leaving both Alpha and their open betas on in March of this year, they will be shutting their doors on August fourteenth. Just six, some six months later, not even fully. That's that's five months. That's so short of a time. March and is the third month, and August is the eighth. So that's five months. That was they had such a big presence at PAX this year. Yeah, because uh, that's when it launched. Um. They send me emails constantly during the beta because I've been in the beta since like I want to say maybe March of last year. Uh, I've been in yeah I've been in the closed beta and maybe even the closed alpha very early on. I got in yeah. right away and literally a day before I got in, uh, a professor of mine who was the lead champion designer on the game emailed me and was like, "Hey, want a key?" And so it's really kind of disappointing. So, I didn't like the game at all. Um, and they would email me, like, I want to say at least once a week with free in-game currency. And I pretty much ended up with all the characters from the currency <laughs> that they just gave me. And oh, I just ignored that stuff. And they still didn't, like, pull me in with that. Like, I just didn't find the game fun. Like, I, I think the issue that happened was... I enjoyed the game. I liked it from when I first played it. It was a little laggy on my computer because um, the art was like a bit better than like League or something. Uh, I think one of the issues was... Well, there were two issues. First, out of all the MOBAs, this one was the most similar to League. And they did that on purpose. They like would hire people as testers See, who were... that sounds like the first mistake. They would ha hire people who are platinum or up in League. They would... All their developers and stuff, like, the guy I talked to, he was Platinum or Diamond in League. Like, they loved League of Legends. They had tournaments in the office. And the game itself was designed very similarly to League, which, that's an issue. All the other MOBA games have differentiated each any other. other. Any other successful MOBA? Yeah. Does Dota, not... is, Dota is very different from League. Um, Heroes. Heroes is different from League. It's, they all differentiate, yeah, the ones Smite. that succeeded, uh, Smite, it's th third person, right away, it's different. Yeah. Um, like, they all differentiate each other. This one different, was pretty much just, A cut and hey. Paste with DC characters. Yeah. And they did that well. Like, I liked, not all the champions were, oh, this is, j luckily, it wasn't like Heroes of New Earth was to Dota, because Heroes of New Earth was literally like, all these are remade Dota yeah. champions, where, this like everyone was unique and it was really well, cool what they were doing not a hundred percent but they they were still different like to a point everything is going to seem similar because there's only so much you can do well when when you have like 40 characters that are like this <coughs> one's, this one's ninja batman this one's franken batman this well no it, yeah but batman. unique in like mechanics like is what batman I'm talking. Ones. yeah but i'm saying unique in mechanics yeah no, it's no, not no, like no. oh this champion just feels like he's literally this league champion yeah it was different the other issue in both the beta and everything, most of the time the only maps were like the Dominion Capture Point maps and stuff, not the traditional three lanes MOBA map. And when they did finally bring it up, it wasn't even like the map that you could most widely play. And that's the thing that MOBA players want to play. In yeah. Dota, Heroes, Smite, um, League, the most popular maps that are played the most are the traditional three lanes three lane maps yep that's just how you that's the most comfortable and when you have a game that's such such so similar to league and then you don't offer that most regular mobile players are gonna look at it and be like then why am i not just playing league when a free-to-play game closes its doors in under five months yeah 
That's not a good sign. And the game itself wasn't even bad. It wasn't poorly put together. It wasn't even poorly designed. Like, I thought no, it was it fun. I thought it was creative. It didn't give a reason to play it. <laughs> it didn't give people hooks. And again, like what I was saying, because it was so similar to League, that's an issue. Yeah. And because it didn't offer the most traditional map you want from a MOBA, people are going to look at it and be like, wow, this is like League, but it's missing a big thing that League has. Why don't I just play League? Yeah. That's an issue. Uh... Oh, yeah, and uh, there was an official forum post announcing this. We glossed over this to talk. From community manager Celestrata? Celestrata. After much deliberation, we regret to announce the official shutdown of Infinite Crisis. We will end development efforts today and will close the service on August 14th, 2015. Between now and August 14th, the game will remain available to play completely free. If you have any questions, contact customer service for assistance at support.infinitecrisis.com. There, this was an extremely difficult decision to make on behalf of the entire Infinite Crisis team. We want to thank all of you for your feedback, support, and for joining together for, to create one of the best communities in gaming. It's like, it's not even like, like they kept this game updated. I got emails like so often I've about, oh, so this new champion. It's like this new champion's coming, this new person. Check them out. And it's like, they had their stuff together. It really, it's like, uh, I was talking about this yesterday with a coworker, and they were basically said, when you make a cookie cutter game, you need to be careful not to burn yourself when making the cookies. <laughs> when you're making a game in a in basically a genre that is blowing up and becoming like the hot genre, like MOBAs have become or are trying to become like what first person shooters were like 10 years ago. I don't think they're going to get there. But. I don't think they're going to either because we've had ones that have popped up and been the big ones. And because <laughs> I feel like the communities in the competitive like sense have been set on what they want. That breaking away and having it be interesting enough to bring people in is going to be hard. And you're yeah. going to get a lot of failures like Infinite Crisis that try to be too similar to one so people just go... Why would I choose this one over the one that's already got, like, their feet on the ground? Yeah. I think we have our big three right now. And I, it's, I think it's... With Heroes of uh, the Storm, like, finally releasing, um, I think... I'm going to say big four, because in competitive scenes, Smite's not out of the running. Yeah, they're not as big as the others, but Smite, I don't think, is going to die. Okay, I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll say big four, then. Yes, yeah, so um, Smite, Smite's been doing all right for itself and been shown at, like, competitive events yeah. and... Everything. And it's on the console, so that gives him an edge. Yeah. Uh, and it's doing well on the console. Um, Heroes covers the casual MOBA fan, because it is a casual MOBA. Yeah. Um, but to me, it's way more fun than playing League. Uh, oh, it's definitely it's casual. It's got that Blizzard polish that League just doesn't even remotely have. <laughs> uh, it has a launcher that's functional and is nice to be in. Um, League launcher is not bad. League bad. launcher is a mess. Currently... It, you... Currently, I have to log into League twice because the launcher doesn't recognize that I logged in the first time. Well, yeah, that's just got to be double certain because it, it, it does that to me. Um, the launch the launcher is trash. Yeah. Uh, heroes, heroes, I have a lot of fun with. League is League and Dota <coughs> are for the highly like competitive uh, yeah. MOBA players. League is for like the mainstream competitive. I feel like, and Dota is for like the the wizened old competitive like dota's like we've been here first yeah. we they might not be as mean like league blows up in mainstream with like like everyone now knows league's competitive but dota it's like it's not dying out and like the wizened people who have been with mobas for far longer have been like no this is far more competitive and smite fills like a whole different area where it's like yeah. i want to play a moba but i only want skill shots and i want to play a third like I loved Smite when it first came out because I thought it played more like an FPS, like where it's like every yeah. shot matters, like you have to hit things. Uh, yeah, I don't even know who Smite's audience is, but I know Smite does well, and I yeah. know so many people love Smite, so I can't, yeah, I can't Smite's argue. Really fun. That. Um, so I think it's going to be with those four out. I think it's going to be really hard to yeah. crack into the MOBA market. And like any other ones are going to be like fun to play, but. Never competitive, like Super Monday Night Combat. I like that every now and then, but it's yeah, it never was, it reached that fun. level. Uh, Lord it's of fun the, and I'll Lord pop it in, but I'll never get into it. Guardians of Middle Earth. I had fun playing that for like a hot like three days, and then it was like, okay, like I'm done with that. 
yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So goodbye, Infinite Crisis. I it was nice to know you. I it, wish it I nice played to, more. It was nice to know you. I'm glad I won't be getting more emails. <laughs> I, I'm a little sad because I have so many uh, friends who work at Turbine, and I, I liked, I liked everything I saw of the game. I just never played it. See, because I, it the definitely... other thing, I one summer went on a huge MOBA kick and played like so many MOBAs, including that one. I got burnt out. So I'm sticking with one right now because I was trying to learn and master yeah. so many at one time that I got. I sucked at all of them. It, it didn't hit on any level for me because I don't like the DC. All um, right. You're a heathen. I forgot. And, and I, I'm not huge into MOBAs. So like it, it didn't win any awards for me. Let me just... Uh... But I, but I love emails. <laughs> Let me just get my shirt on camera. Just... I know, you're pretending to be CJ to fill in for him. <laughs> yeah, sadly. Um, I should have put I'll just this... show off my up tattoo of the Blue Lantern symbol. I should have put this news with the other Steam news, but let's talk about more Steam stuff. Yay! Uh, Steam is finally getting refunds. Uh, and a proper... Actually, wait, I do like this news. It just, it's a semi-proper system. Yeah. So, as of yesterday, users of Valve's PC platform will be able to get full refunds on any game for any reason. With little caveats behind that. Yeah. Uh, uh, provided it's been less than 14 days since the purchase. Provides it was. And they've spent less than two hours playing it. Uh, you'll be able to get your money back for DLC bundles and even pre-purchase games with the new system, which will make pre-orders feel like less of a risk. Uh, once the pre-purchase game is out, Valve says its standard re uh, refund restrictions will apply. That I like. I, 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 I like this whole system, except for the fact that you can't refund a gift and yes, give someone their money back. You can't refund gifts, uh, which are still a thing. Um, I, because that's why I want it. Because I've had a friend who, almost to torment me, loved to buy me games on Steam. Because I would say, no, don't buy, don't spend your money on me, I'm poor, don't do that. And he would just buy, not games on sale, like full price games, and just send them to me. And he would do a lot for us to play together. But my computer's not great. So he kept sending me games I couldn't even open. Yeah. And so I have so many games in my Steam library I've never even touched that a friend gifted and I've never even played with them. That I just wish I could have refunded and given him his money back. Well, because he dropped like you can't. I know. <laughs> he like got me Payday Two not on sale like when it first came out, and I can't can't play it. And that was like well, we're gonna, a fifty dollar purchase. We're gonna fix that. Don't worry. Please. Um. So and and another thing came out recently that uh so people were actually complaining. Um, I don't know if it was people or more developers that two <laughs> hours is too long, uh, for certain games. <coughs> Um, I've played games. Yeah. I've played Ooh. games on Steam that I've played in like I have beaten in under two two hours. They're more indie titles. Some but if in I under beat, thirty minutes. If I beat a game in under two hours, now I can just return it. Yeah. But so there's there's caveats to that too. Uh, Valve has said that if they start seeing people abuse the system like that, where they're like, "Hey, you, you like you beat the game and then you returned it." Like, they'll start putting restrictions on, like, specific people's refunds. Okay. Uh, so if they start seeing people, like, just completely abuse the system, then they'll go from there. That, that's fair, because, yeah, a lot of indie games won't take two hours. Yeah. But then other people are saying, like, two hours is too short, because games like The Witcher or, like, Grand Theft Auto, like, two hours is barely a drop in the bucket. How do you judge the game in two hours? My response to that is, like, I can pretty much tell if in two hours of the game... If this is a world that I want to spend more time in, yeah. So, I don't. I don't really get that. Um, it's, in Grand Theft Auto, two hours of the game, you know what the rest. Of the